Do you want to stay more focused on the right goals in your life or even just figure out what the right goals are for you? Do you want clarity? Do you want better work-life balance? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to Success Through Failure. Welcome to the Success Through Failure podcast, the show that reveals failure as your path to success. You'll listen to intriguing interviews with some of the most successful people on the planet and learn how their failures became a launchpad for success and how yours can too. Here's your host, former Division I All-American wrestler, former Division I head coach, speaker, and personal coach, Jim Harshaw. Welcome to another episode of Success Through Failure. Today, I bring you Matt Phillips. I've had tons of amazing guests on this show, well over 100 now, billionaires, astronauts, professional athletes, world-renowned entrepreneurs, and they've shared their insider secrets for success. They've offered everything from top book recommendations to success hacks to action items that you can use today to see results immediately. If you're like me, you love this kind of stuff. And if you're like me, you want to get the cliff notes, or I guess these days they call them the spark notes. Well, you can get access to the action plans from your favorite guests, like Spartan Race founder Joe DeSena from episode 27, or Navy SEAL Mark Devine from episode 45, or maybe fitness guru Tony Horton from episode 85, plus other amazing tips and tactics to help you get clear on how to get from where you're at to where you want to be. I put all this in one place because you're busy and you want to get what you need quickly so you can move on with your day. Here's what I want you to do. Go to jimharshawjr.com slash action to get instant access to everything I just talked about. That's jimharshawjr.com slash action. And if you're listening to this on iTunes, there are three dots on your screen. Just touch the three dots, select View full description. There you'll see the link to download all the incredible resources and action plans that I just mentioned. Now for today's guest. Matt is a speaker, author, and high-performance coach. He helps business leaders, athletes, trainers, and coaches develop their mental toughness so they consistently perform their best day after day and year after year. A former professional baseball player in Austria's Bundesliga, which is their first league, which is like their major league baseball over there. Uh, and he's a former Division I baseball player in the United States. Matt discovered that peak performance requires a dominant inner game. Using his mental toughness approach, Matt teaches people how to systematically build their confidence, drive, determination, and perseverance so they can take their game to the next level. And as usual, for the listener, if you hear something you like, but you don't have time to write it down, uh, or if you don't get a chance to listen to the entire episode, make sure you grab your free copy of The Action Plan. Just go to jimharshawjr.com slash action. Lots of great resources there, not just action plans, but goal-setting templates and all kinds of good stuff. So make sure you grab your, your copy of that there. Matt, welcome to the show. Jim, thanks so much for having me. Always good to chat with you. Likewise, um, Matt, for the listener, Matt and I have known each other for, I don't know, six months or something like that, and uh, we're part of a mastermind group together, so gotten to know him quite a bit, and just, uh, I I love what he's built, I love what he's building, I love what he's doing, and uh, I thought this was just a perfect time to bring him onto the show and and, uh, and share it with my audience. So, Matt, why don't you do this? Why don't you give us sort of a 30,000-foot view of of who you are, where you're from, give us a little bit about your background and how you kind of got from there to here. Absolutely. And, and thanks again for having me. You know, really, you know, my quick background, you know, people ask what I do. I tell them I work with business professionals and entrepreneurs along with athletes on mental toughness and leadership development. And my entire focus of my business is to help people get to that next level in literally every area of life, right? I think there's a lot of focus on business and career, but we often neglect fitness and nutrition, the spiritual world. Uh, kind of the the emotional side of things, and so I look very holistically. You know, how do we how do we achieve what we were put on this earth to achieve? As cliche as that sounds, uh, you know, I honestly believe that we all have an opportunity uh, to kind of utilize our our God given gifts and talents every day, so that when we're on our deathbed, you know, hopefully many 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 years from now, that we can look back with confidence and know that we had a great ride, right? That we we took chances, we took risks, we 
we found out what was possible in this world. And I choose to do that through, through mindset, through what I call mental toughness and just helping people break through those fears and the doubts and the worries and help them to continue to take steps forward uh, to where they want to go in life. Um, you know, my, I originally started this business gym actually, um, based on a uh, experience I had in athletics, uh, years and years ago. And the, the initial approach was to help athletes transition to life after sports, uh, as a matter of fact. And, and, you know, my quick story, I played division one college baseball at, at Creighton university, uh, in Omaha, Nebraska. And then went on to play, as you said, in Austria's Bundesliga, uh, for a little while and have some good stories to tell from that. But I was actually a walk on at Creighton cut after two days, my freshman year, uh, and tried out my sophomore year on a dare from a friend after not having touched a baseball for a year and ended up making the team. And, and, uh, you know, the rest is history, as they say. And, you know, I, I think as athletes, and this is true in the business world as well, um, in every area of life is, you know, when we face that adversity, those transitions that happen, whether we, we make them, you know, we, we get them rolling or they just happen to us. Uh, we go through these identity crises and that's where our mindset is tested. And uh, so originally starting out is, Hey, how do I help athletes transition to, to life after sports and help them through this identity crisis? It's really morphed into like, listen, to be able to do that, it's all about what's between your ears. It's, it's between, it's your brain, right? Um, it's all mindset. And so that's where you know, I get so you know, fired up, you know, in speeches and these mastermind groups I run in all these different areas of I get to now kind of climb into people's heads and, and mess around a little bit and give them these tools and techniques to help them, frankly, get out of their own way. Uh, something that I personally work on every day for myself. Uh, and so anyway, so it's, you know, I've been very blessed in my life to, to play sports at a fairly high level and, and now have the opportunity to absolutely do what I love to do when I wake up every day. Before we get into some of these tactics, you and I haven't really uh, talked about your your experience over there in Austria. What you mentioned, you have some good stories from over there. What what was that like uh, playing over there? It provided me one of the most unique perspectives I've I've had in my life. And uh, you know, I grew up in the Colorado area. I reside in, in Denver, Colorado today. And being able to move overseas and live in a different culture where I didn't speak the language was fascinating. Um, the, the team I played for uh, was called the Diving Ducks in the town of Wiener Neustadt, Austria. And Wiener Neustadt uh, is, for your geography buffs, is 50 kilometers about south of Vienna. And the unique thing was, uh, one of the unique things was I was one of two foreigners allowed on the field at one time. Wow. Uh, obviously, they, as a lot of countries do, they want to develop their local talent. And so I played shortstop over there. And then the other American, the other foreigner on the team was the catcher. And the teams we'd play against, they'd have, we played against people, you know, Dominicans, Japanese players, uh, other Americans, Australians. Uh, there are people from all over the world uh, in Austria, you know, playing. And we travel around and get to, uh, you know, get to play those individuals and, and along with the Austrians. But it was a unique perspective being kind of the, the minority, if you will, in a foreign country. And, and just the language barrier, learning to deal with that and uh, learning to communicate differently. Um, even though they spoke a different language, we had this common language of, of baseball together. So just that perspective was fascinating for me. I had this unbelievable host family uh, with two host brothers, one I'm still very, very close with today. Um, and just being able to experience the culture, I mean, the travel we got to do, uh, it was incredible. Yeah, I bet I'm a I'm a big believer in travel and experiencing different cultures. I've been to 16 countries. Uh, started with Turkey was my first experience overseas, and I I competed in wrestling over in Turkey when I was in high school on a, on a USA team, and it was just just this eye opening, oh. incredible experience. I would you know I'm a small town kid from a rural town about a half an hour north of Pit, north of Pittsburgh, and so you know blue collar and and just uh this is not something that that I really uh had any experience with so yeah I I and I you know my wife and I love to travel and we try to try to get on some pretty fun adventurous trips and just experience different cultures so I'm sure that was uh an eye opening experience and it's pretty neat that you had that like you said that shared language of baseball that uh, the, the sports can really really do wonders for that they can you know living in Austria you gave me this itch to move back to Europe again and I 
took a when I was back in public accounting, I started my career with Ernst and Young, and and uh, took a three year assignment over in Zurich, Switzerland, and it was a very similar but different experience. And I think any time you can get out of your comfort zone like that, um, whether it's you know even within the U.S., you don't have to necessarily move overseas, but um, just to be able to experience things differently and see it from a different perspective, it just it changes you for forever. And usually it's for the positive. So it's incredible what those types of just experiences, just doing things a little bit differently than you've ever done before, how that can open you up in big ways. I mean, I agree. And you can even get some of those cultural experiences right in the United States. I mean, sometimes, you know, we live in our own little bubbles in our own little world. And, uh, and there's, there's, there's other cultures right in our own town. So Matt, you, you talked about this holistic approach to your coaching and, and your development of people. Um, everybody likes to, you know, get coaching and thinking about their their career and their profession. But but why is it so important to to develop the other side? You mentioned the spiritual side, and um, you know, I, I'm a big believer in that as well. I mean, we you know we start with the relationship goals with with my clients. You know, relationships, self, health, and wealth are sort of the four areas that we focus on. Why why do you feel like that's important? Probably like a lot of your listeners you know, what we deal with on a daily basis, I think we find out quickly that, you know, as I say, you know, personal and professional, I, I think are 100% linked. Um, I think you hear in the media that, you know, you need to separate when you walk in the door to business, how like you got to leave the personal stuff at home. Right. And, and this is all business. And, and I disagree with that. I think everything is linked. Um, just as I, I believe that, you know, your, your business and your career um, is tied very closely to your spiritual beliefs, to your emotional well-being, uh, to your mental state, uh, to your physical fitness and nutrition, like everything's so closely linked. I mean, there's that saying, you know, the body feeds the mind and the mind feeds the body. And it's true. I mean, if you start looking at the science behind the stuff and how exercise impacts you, uh, impacts your clarity and and your neuroplasticity and uh, the way your brain is wired, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Uh, the way like just these beings we have and the power that they hold within them. And I just approach it like, listen, if we want to perform our best, we've got to be consistent across all areas of our lives, right? We've got to be taking care of ourselves in different areas. And that doesn't mean, you know, we're staying up 23 hours a day to make sure every need is met and things like that. It's, you know, how do we strategically attack these different areas where we can get the most um, out of what we need so we can, you know, play and, and perform with confidence, uh, being focused, being emotionally in control and having the energy that we need. And so, you know, a lot of my conversations with individuals, just like here's Jim, I'm sure um, we end up, you know, talking a lot about the you know, relationship side of things or what they're eating or what they're drinking, uh, you know, and then obviously climbing into their mindset and starting to understand that the way we think it impacts us far beyond just this kind of frou-frou magical universe world that we are physiologically changing our bodies based on the way we think. Um, and it's just so important. I've seen it played out too many times in my life uh, where I am, you know, down in the dumps of one in one area and it affects the other. And then a week later, the opposite is true. And so it's just, instead of trying to separate things, how do we, how do we strategically attack this differently than we ever have before? Talk a little bit more about the mindset piece there, because I feel like I feel like people can work really hard. They can even have goals, but if your mind isn't right, I don't I don't feel like you can really achieve your highest level. Like I'll give you an example personally. You know, again, just going back to our our, our shared experience in athletics. I was a wrestler, of course, and you know, I I worked really hard, and I was a pretty good wrestler, but I could never really get over that hump. Until I, until I got, you know, essentially a mindset coach, right? Who still remains a, a mentor and good friend of mine today. And that's when I really, that's when I got over the hump. You know, I, I, I broke down these, these limitations that I didn't even realize I had, right? I just thought it was sort of me and it was just sort of built into me. I mean, do you see that in people? Do you see these, these self-imposed limitations that people really don't even know that they have just because that they've been there since they were a kid? Oh, you bet all the time. And it, what's interesting is, you know, we all have our stories, right? And we all have these circumstances that have happened and unfolded in our lives 
that have made us into the people that we are today. And you're exactly right that sometimes we realize we're putting limits on ourselves and sometimes we don't. And the, the power of a you know, coach or, or mentor or you know, somebody you trust in your life, they can, the beauty is they can point out some of those things and make you aware of them. Because you know, when we think about like, you know, again, cliche, like let's make it to the top, right? You know, whatever, that's, that's different for everybody, right? Or, or success, I want to be successful. It's like, well, what does that mean? Well, in order to have that happen and accomplish that, you have to dig deep and you have to look at your past and just understand like what limits and worries and, and stress and feelings of overwhelming. Like, what am I, what, what am I dealing with? What am I putting upon myself? What am I projecting in the world? And then how do I start shifting uh, the way that I think? And how do I start creating these new neural pathways that are going to open up these opportunities, right? How do I start activating different parts of the brain that, uh, you know, are going to start or start showing me data that, Hey, I am moving in the right direction. And, you know, I think back to even me of, I remember this experience my freshman year of high school. I mean, this is like, this is a long time ago. And I remember I was trying out for the freshman baseball team and uh, I made the team and we were at practice one day and I was standing next to a teammate and the coach's notebook happened to be open and had a list of players on it. And next to my name was three question marks. And what's really interesting, and I just had this realization, Jim, probably like a year ago, um, is that that subconsciously was, was, it was buried away, right? Even unconsciously, it was buried away. And I remembered that because all of a sudden I was flooded. And I remember, I, I, I can picture myself right there. I can feel what it felt like. I was flooded with these emotions of like, should I, like, am I good enough? Should I have made this team? Did he make an exception to allow me to play? And I know that had an impact on me through my college years, uh, even playing over in Austria, because there was this, always this little doubt in my head of like, you know, should I be here? Right. Does the coach really think I'm worthy? And you know, what's interesting is I, as I started diving into that for myself, I started asking questions like, cause listen, Jim, I don't even know what the coach was thinking when he wrote those question marks. Yeah, he could have he been, could have been, uh, saying, could have been like Major League what, Prospect, maybe, well, you know? <laughs> exactly, like a Major League Prospect. Like, what maybe what, what position should I put him at where he's right. going to play his best, right? Sure. Who knows why he did, wrote yeah, that? Did he turn maybe in he his, did uh, did he like, turn in his medical form? Exactly. Right? Could have been so anything. I, I, exactly. I, based on that situation, I projected that he must have been thinking that. And so I should, in turn, believe that about myself. Instead of, this is where that mindset comes in, of looking at it, analyzing it, seeing for what it is. A, I could have asked him a question, right? But B, you know, listen, I have been given an opportunity to play on that team. So obviously I am good enough. Obviously I have the skill set to perform. So I'm just going to keep doing what made me successful to this point. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it up a notch, right? Uh, but I, that experience, I, it was just fascinating for me even going through that um, just a year ago to realize that like, wow, that had a profound impact. And now I need to start reworking and rewiring myself through that um, and, and just taking the steps necessary to do that. So everybody yeah. has those doubts. Everybody has those fears. Um, you know, even mindset coaches have them, right? They are all around us. And what's interesting is the way I define, you know, the way I talk about mental toughness is that we are, we are building a muscle, right? We're building our mental muscle. And it's no different than going to the gym and I say, I want bigger biceps or, or I want, you know, uh, bigger quads or something like that. Right. You have to lift weights to make that happen. Right. You've got to work out the muscle. And the same thing is true of our brain. We have to consistently work it out. And that's where the consistency comes in of like, that's across every area of life. Right. Um, we have to be consistent and, you know, mental toughness, it's not some magic pill. It's not a five hour energy that you pop and, Hey, I'm, I'm mentally tough. Now it's something you have to constantly work on. And what you find over time as you integrate these techniques is that what used to hold you back for five days, all of a sudden becomes five hours. And then that five hours over time becomes five minutes and that five minutes becomes five seconds. And instead of us standing in our, you know, in the same place or moving backwards, now we're delaying for less time and we're able to move forward and go where we want to go in this life. 
So I've got two follow-up questions based on everything you just said there. Number one, Please. you know, you started talking about you you, st- you started out by saying you have to dig deep, right? You have to dig deep and and yes. and figure out what you're thinking and why you're thinking it and that sort of thing. So number one is how do you do that? And for, especially for the listener who's sitting there going, yeah, okay, I, I buy it, I'm in. You know, tell me what do, what do I do to dig deep? Well, how do we even? see my blind, you know, see my blind spots. And then that's, that's number number one, how do I dig deep? And then number two, what are these techniques you mentioned? Can you share with us any techniques? So start with number one, how do you dig deep? And then maybe follow up with number two, what are some techniques that you can do on a regular, like you said, on a regular basis to, uh, to work on your mindset? Absolutely. Well, you know, first of all, you know, aside from for something to do at home, right. Aside from my hiring a coach and you know, I know you and I always joke about this, but you know, I've got a coach. So a coach has a coach. Like, yeah, a coach has a coach, right? right. <laughs> so, um, but for, for things to do at home, you know, I'm a big fan of, of journaling. Right. And one thing I've discovered is that most of us, we, we know like what's going on and we know those situations. And if, if I were to ask, like, you know, if you, if you were coaching with me or, or coaching with you, Jim, and we were to start asking some questions about, you know, tell me about some situations in your past that have just really impacted you. Like the, we all know. And, and, and I imagine your listeners right now are like, okay, I know one of those situations, right? We all have them really at the forefront of our yeah. mind, those impactful um, kind of life-changing situations and circumstances. Right. And, but I'm a big fan of journaling. Right. And it's, it's taking those and getting them down on paper and, and seeing them for what they are. And, writing down and reflecting on like, what, what was so unique about the situation? What went on? Who was there? What, what did people say to you? Uh, what did you see? What did you think? But getting it down on paper, because that becomes almost like a data point for people. Right. And then what I find is, and especially for business people, right. Of, you know, business today is you know, driven off of data, right. We're always constantly talking about analytics and, and, and measuring things. And yet from our personal lives, the things that have impacted us, we don't often take the time to get it down on paper because data has to be physical, right? We've got to have numbers and all that stuff, but to take this journaling approach and write down, like what was, what was so unique about that situation and how did it impact me? And then having almost that just analyzing and saying, should it have impacted me that way? Right. And maybe the answer is yes. Maybe the answer is no, but then taking that, kind of additional step and saying, how do I want this to define me? Right? What, what do I need to learn from this? What can I take from this and positively spin in a way that I can impact others in big ways or even in small ways by just thinking about this a little bit differently, right? It's reframing that situation to say, well, this happened. I know it did and it negatively impacted me this way. But what if I think about this differently? Because now I'm staring at the data points. I see, I see it right in front of me, right? I see it on paper. What if I thought about it just a little bit differently and put a different spin on this? Not to neglect it didn't happen, right? Not to, not to say it didn't. But how can I positively use this in my life as a force to move forward? And the, the journaling aspect, and I know, I know you, you do it as well, Jim, yeah. um, it's huge because it, what it often does is it'll take something that you think is big and it'll make it small. Um, but it also allows you the space to say, okay, it's finally out of my head and it's, it's somewhere else for the moment. And now I can truly see what I want to do with this and make a decision differently than I have before. Yeah. So that's kind of that, the way I approach it on, on kind of point number one. Yeah, and that's really a technique too. I mean, it's one of those things that I, I tell people. It's like you can, you take these, um, whether it's a coaching conversation uh, or whether it's journaling. I think those are both two really, really powerful ways to take this subconscious voice um, and story that we're telling ourselves um, and and take it and bring it above the surface. Right, it's subsurface right now, and it's sort of operating in in the in the subconscious. But when you bring it above and above the surface and you can see it in the light of day, then you can attack it. Then you can make decisions based off of that. You can hedge against any sort of, uh, you know, drawbacks that you have or, or negative aspects of that mindset. And you can hedge and go, okay, so I don't like to take massive action because, 
you know, because of the, these things that happened in my past. So I know that logically I know I can take massive action or I can do this thing or I can speak in front of a group or whatever the case might be. I can logically think that, but it's that emotional side that, that is sort of subsurface that we don't, we tend to not act or, or act a certain way because of it. But when you put it up in the light of day, we can go, okay, I can make, I, I can actually do these things and I can logically think through them as opposed to just letting them happen. Yes. Well, it's, it, what's interesting to me and, you know, I'll, I'll talk about a tool and something that your, your listeners can do here in a, in a second, but it's, it goes back to that earlier comment I made about consistency, right? You know, the, the techniques that exist, right. To change your mindset, change the way of thinking, like it's, we're, we're not, cha- we're not like turning a ship, right. We're not turning the Titanic where these are small little tweaks that need to be made but it comes back to how consistently can you apply the tools that you learn, right? Uh, we grow a muscle because we consistently lift weights. The same thing is true of our mindset. If we can be consistent and do the small things right, that's that compounding effect. And I think we, we often as a society, and I've, I've fallen into this in the past too, right? Where if I'll just do one big thing once, it's like, no, no, no. If you look at every business in history that's grown, right, there has been a ton of small things that have happened over an extended period of time, right? There are no overnight successes. And the same is true of us. Of like, you know, by journaling, by writing this down, by hiring a coach, it's not like it's all of a sudden going to go away, but it comes back to that consistency of I'm going to apply what I learn on a more consistent basis than those around me. And that's where I'm going to get the big benefit. It goes back to that word. And it was interesting, um, you know, one of the hot topics, gosh, over the past like six, nine months for me has been risk taking, right? And we, we talk about, you know, in business a lot that, um, I was just at a company, we were talking about this. They want to create this culture that, uh, that supports risk taking, right? Uh, that if you fail, it's okay right? We want you to continue to put yourself out there. And I think that's a difficult thing uh, for a lot of companies to have happen because while they're trying to do it at a company level, like we forget that we're dealing with individuals, right? Who have different, uh, who have been brought up different ways and have different tolerances to risk and all that stuff. And, and this theme is though, it's just been in my face and I've been talking about it a lot. And one tool that I found very beneficial actually came out of a conversation that I had with my old college baseball coach. And I'll tell you the quick story. I had the opportunity to go back to Creighton and speak to the baseball team and the head coach there, uh, Ed Service was actually the assistant coach when I played and he's been the head coach for, I think 10 plus years at this point. So we go back quite a ways and I went and flew to Omaha, spoke to the team, came back to Denver. And then I called my coach. Cause like, I don't know. I think it's just the way I've been brought up that, I'm constantly figuring out how do I get better, right? So I wanted to call my coach and find out. So I asked him, hey, coach, how'd it go? And, and uh, you know, he said, Matt went great. You know, the, the guys, you know, loved it and all that stuff. And he said, here's, here's the one area I think you could improve. He said, you don't spend enough time talking about the risks you've taken in your life. And he said, I need these kids to know that it is okay to take a risk. And if they want to get ahead in any area of life, even on the baseball field, it's about taking risks. And what was interesting is that right after he said that, my next comment to my coach was, what are you talking about? I'm like, I, I'm, what, what risks are you talking about? I literally had zero idea uh, what he was referring to. And he went on to explain a couple of things. And I know we didn't get you know too into this, uh, but you know, he talked about, he said, Matt, listen, you were a walk-on twice at Creighton, right? He said, you were cut your freshman year. You didn't touch a ball for a year, tried out again, made the team. He said, you then decided to move to Austria of all places to go play in the Bundesliga. Uh, you live with a host family that barely spoke English. Uh, you then, you know, started your career and you moved to Kansas city. And then you moved to Zurich, Switzerland for three years. You've taken multiple jobs with multiple companies in different functions, different areas, taking on really cool projects. He goes, Matt, you're a risk taker. And what was fascinating about that was that was the first time in my life that I saw 
like data that proved I was a risk taker because uh, I don't know if you're this way, Jim, but like when I'm with my financial advisor and filling out my risk assessment, right? I'm like, Oh, well, <laughs> right. totally risk adverse, right? Sure. Not, not too much risk, not too much risk. I got to protect my assets. <laughs> yeah. But if you look at the history of like me starting businesses and in my career, it's been constantly focused on taking risks and putting myself out there. I mean, for goodness sake, I played a game that's based on failure. Yeah. Where if you fail right. 70% of the time, you are good. You right. can be legendary if you get to Major League Baseball, right? And I, I finally started putting two and two together with this. So if we want to create that culture within a company that it is okay to fail, you have to start, I believe, with showing every individual in the company that you want to take those risks, that they are a risk taker. Even though they may fill out that financial advisor form a bit differently and say they're risk adverse, that they have taken risks that have gotten to them to this point in their career, in their business, in their life, when fitness, with emotionally, spiritually, they have taken risks to get there and they can do it again. And this is a safe place to do it. But you can do it again. You have taken thousands of risks over your life, right? I bet if you, it, what I want your listeners to do is to get on a blank piece of paper and I want you to go back through your history. And I want you to write down every risk you've taken. Maybe you've moved, you've taken different jobs, you asked a, a person on a date, maybe you got married, uh, you know, you took on a, this project, you started this business, you started this other business, whatever it is, you will come up with a list of a ton of items where it'll show you that you have taken risks. And sometimes you've been successful, sometimes you have failed or had an opportunity for improvement. We don't really fail, do we? Right. But it'll show you that you can continue to take those risks. You can take the steps necessary to get where you want to go. It's just about taking that first step and leveraging, right? We talk about confidence, right? I want to play with confidence. That's that mindset, right? Well, look at your history. You've been uber successful to this point, right? Look at the risk you've taken and take pride in that. Like be confident in that and use that as fuel to move you forward in that next stage. So along those lines, Matt, can you share with us a time you, where you took a risk and, and you got burned? You know, a time where you failed and, and because of that failure, maybe you had the self-doubt or maybe you had the mental toughness and, and the right mindset. Um, but I think all of us can relate to having that, that failure and, and that leads to self-doubt and that hopelessness. But can you share with us a time where, where you felt that and how you moved through it? Absolutely. So, I mean, there's so many, Jim. <laughs> how much time do we have? How much time do we have? Um, you know... A, a couple, well, I'll give you one. It really was starting this business. Um, you know, I was in corporate America for, you know, quite a long time. I was in you know, public accounting and then I, I moved over to different accounting and operations roles before I started this business. And when I initially started this out, um, I said, I'm going all in, right? And I quit my job and I went all in and I found out quickly that uh, I wasn't getting as much traction as I wanted. And I had to go back and start consulting just to put food on the table, right? To get the cash flow going again. And that very simple thing, right? Because some, there's some listeners who are going to be like, well, yeah, you had to do what you had to do, right? There are some out there who are sitting there saying, ooh, you took a risk and you failed. I need to go back to consulting. Well, the way I chose to view it was differently. Uh, I started out this business, um, and my gosh, this is probably seven yeah, plus years ago at this point. Um, I started out this business. I started formulating it. I decided to take a risk. The timing seemed to be off a little bit, so I did what I needed to do to protect my family, and I went back and got a job. Now, that didn't mean that this dream died. It kept going. It kept morphing. It kept changing. I kept knocking on doors. I kept taking action. And I had to overcome that self-doubt where I had to look in the mirror and say, wait a minute, you know, this isn't a failure. It is a temporary pause, right? That I need to take at this moment, uh, just from a cash flow perspective, it's a temporary pause, but we continue to move forward, right? I'm still taking the steps forward. And I knew there were people out there who were doubting me. I knew, I knew there were people out there who were saying, oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. you know, failed. And this is never going to take off. But I, again, I leveraged my past and I, almost taking my baseball career, right? Because I, I could go games where, 
you know, and this was rare, but I'd strike out, you know, two or three times a game. Well, the fourth time I would still step up to the plate because a couple of things. One is I wanted to help my team however possible, right? Even if I was having the worst game in the world, I could get a hit right now, which could break this thing open and change things. The second thing was that I knew what it felt like to hit a ball perfectly. And I wanted to feel that again, right? I knew what success felt like and I wanted more of it. So I stepped up again. And even with this business, even though there was that temporary pause, I knew that this was going to open up. I knew the opportunity was there, but I just needed to continue to take the steps and believe in myself that I'd done it before. I'm going to go do it again. But it came down, Jim, to like, I chose to think that way because we all have choices. I intentionally chose to focus on myself, building myself up, being confident in myself. And when I felt that self-doubt come on, I would think back to those times where I'd been successful and I knew I could do it again. And that's how I kept moving forward. I mean, there's Jim, there's, there's, you know, I, I'm, I'm blessed now today because I'm doing this full time, right? This is my gig, right? I get yeah. to run these mastermind groups and all this stuff. This is my full time gig, but it's because I chose to think a little bit differently than other people. And it's slightly differently. It's not huge, but it's slightly differently that got me to this point. And I mean, you know, there's, and everybody knows on this, that's listening to this, there are daily, hourly, minutes, you know, I don't, I don't think minutely is a word, but, you know, <laughs> failures every minute. They're all throughout the day, right? They're big, some are small. Most are small, but it's yeah. about, hey, how do, I, how do I shift and reframe and keep moving forward anyway? And for the listener, I want you to recognize that, that you know, he took a risk, he started the business, and it's easy to sit here and tell a story about, you know, that, that I struggled and I couldn't get enough business and I had to go back to consulting. And, and like that's, that's, the, um, that's the experience that we all feel whenever we try something new, try something different. We, like you said, choose to think a little bit differently and try something, you know, take a risk. And then, uh, and then, and then if we get, we get burned a little bit, we get put, we get some pushback, we get some, some resistance, right? If it was easy, everybody would just be doing it. Right. But, but it's not easy. And, and so Matt went through this and he's, he's highly successful now and he's working with amazing people and amazing companies and just doing amazing things, which is why I had him on the show. And, and, but he had to work through that, right? Everybody that you know that we see on, on TV or listen to on the radio or see up on stage or, or look up to as a role model, you know, we read their books, we buy their whatever. They've struggled. They've failed. They've had that moment where they had to, they had to take, you know, they took three steps forward and two steps back. And, and that's a requirement of success. That's a requirement of getting to where we want to get to in, relationships in our, our, our health and our fitness and our wealth and our career professional, whatever the case might be, that is a requirement. That's part of the experience. That's part of the real world experience of getting from here to there, wherever that there is, is for you, for, for the listener. And Matt, so you've given us some action items. Uh, you've told us a story about failure. Can you, can you give us maybe a tool or a technology or an app or a supplement or something that you do that helps you get more done or be, a, be more effective or be more successful? Something that, uh, that you can recommend for me and the listener? Absolutely. So I, I don't have a particular one uh, in mind. I have no uh, you know, loyalties in that regards. But if you on your smartphone can go find any sort of productivity app, and there's a ton out there. Um, I think there's, I think I've got one. Let me look on my phone, like called productivity pro. Um, but there's a ton out there and what it does, all these apps a oh, productive is the name of mine. Um, so all these apps, they allow you to set different reminders and alerts for critical things that you need to do on a daily basis. And you know, a couple of things. One, I've, I've mentioned consistency a ton, right? And I want that ingrained in your mind <laughs> when you leave this podcast of, my gosh, could he, set up cons- could he have said consistency one more time? <laughs> um, and, and, and I'll continue to say it over and over again, because that's, that's one foot in front of the other. And if you can take one step further than the, guy, the person next to you, you're going to get ahead, right? And, uh, but these productivity apps, they take away the thinking of some, certain activities that you want to do, right? So I've got certain reminders set up uh, for taking my vitamins, for example, that go off every single day at the same time. So I know that at 6 a.m., 
it's going to pop up where I need to go take my, you know, vitamin C and vitamin D and all this stuff. I don't have to think about it and remember, right? That forces me to be consistent. I've got another reminder at 7 a.m. that typically when I'm driving to the co-working space that I, that I utilize or off to a client that I am saying my mantras in the car um, and saying them out loud and saying them with, with some fire and some passion behind them. But I'm saying my mantras. I've got other reminders set up where, again, I don't have to think about it. And where as soon as they pop up, I know the benefit that they've given me, right? You've been working out, all this sort of stuff, making a to-do list. I mean, you can create all sorts of different things. But um, it doesn't take brain power for me to remember that I have to do that. Because what happens is if we, we set these goals and we're like, there are many goals. And we're like, okay, today, uh, you know, for the next week, I'm going to take my vitamins. And then you miss a day. And then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm the worst person in the world. And I can't believe I forgot that. And we just are really, really tough on ourselves. Well, if you take some of these things and automate them, then the consistency, consistency just happens. And when you see that reminder, all you got to do is walk over and do what you said you were going to do. Takes the thinking away. I always, I always think of, um, I think a lot of presidents have done this, but the, a lot of presidents of the United States will have, you know, five suits that they wear, right? And it's the same outfit that's just repeated over and over and over again. Well, they don't want to waste brain power on thinking about what they have to wear sure. when they have so many other things going on. So they almost have that kind of alert built in that on Monday, I wear this on Tuesday, I wear this. What yeah. does it matter at the end of the day? Right. right. They're creating one less decision to make, freeing up the brain power for it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So any productivity app I, I've, I've seen personally huge benefits from it and, and clients I've seen big benefits as well. And for the listener, you know, you talk about, uh, this concept of just sort of unloading things off your mind so you don't have to think about them. David Allen, who wrote the book Getting Things Done, I had him on episode 116, 116, talks a lot about the same thing. It's like taking this stuff off of your mind. Your mind is not a storage device. It is a creativity and a thinking device, right? And and so unload the more you can unload things off and, and, and systematize them and, and as Matt said, automate them, the the more free your mind is going to be. And you also talked about consistency. And I'll reference another episode here, episode 125 with Jared Kamar, who's actually one of my clients. Uh, and, and he's just an incredible guy. He's taken a lot of action and, and I had a lot of positive feedback about that episode already. And he talked about this concept of dollar cost averaging, which is a, uh, which is a finance term. But the, it's this idea of being consistent on, on, with your habits and your routines, not only through the good days and, and the, the, when, when things are great, but, but especially when things are down, when, th- when, when the market's down, dollar cost averaging, it's, it's a matter of like being consistent through the downtime so that whenever, whenever the, when the market com- comes back up and rebounds, those, those habits and those routines and those that being consistent, that's when it really pays off. So that's a great, uh, a great takeaway from episode 125. So um, yeah, Matt, those, just, just great advice, great concepts there. So can you recommend for the listener uh, a book or a resource that, uh, that someone could take away from this? So I'll tell you the book I'm reading right now because we talk about the holistic approach. Um, it's called Spark by... John Rady, I'm probably butchering his last name, R-A-T-E-Y, but it talks about the importance and the science behind it of exercise on the mind and on mindset and mental toughness. And I just find it fascinating for you who are uh, contemplating getting back in the gym, uh, who have been wanting to get back and need a little scientific data to push you there and the impact it can have on you. Um, Great. I'm, I'm about halfway through only, and I'm already recommending it. It's just a great look into uh, what exercise can do for the, for the body and for the mind. And I've also been into a lot of stoic um, philosophy now, um, which the way I describe it is it's, it's looking deep into life and, and almost it's facing your fears and it's playing them out and finding out what worst case is, uh, which may sound terrible, but it's actually a fascinating way to to think about life when you face your fears and realize it's not as scary as you thought, uh, it opens up possibilities in your life. So I've got this one, um, you know, uh, letters from a stoic by Seneca that I've been just big into reading, um, uh, lately as well. Excellent. And for the listener, we're going to have a list of everything, all the 
action items and even the the episodes, other episodes that I've referenced here, all these action items in the books, et cetera, all that's going to be listed in the action plan. Just go to jimharshawjr.com slash action. And for the listener also, if you're interested in, in hearing two other guys who are in the mastermind group that Matt and I are in together, uh, Ken Lubin and John Brubaker, uh, that's episode 41 and 42. So back to back, I had two other guys uh, those are some early, early episodes of mine, but uh, two other guys who are in our mastermind. Matt, can you share with the listener how they can find you, follow you, et cetera? Yeah, thanks, Jim. Yeah, you can check out uh, more about me at proathleteadvantage.com. And, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, keynote speaking or one on one coaching, or, you know, I've also launched uh, and have been running this over this past year what I call training squads. So it's mastermind groups with a twist and, uh, but please check out proathleteadvantage.com and you can see some interviews I've done and, and read more about kind of my approach and, and, uh, and my background and please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions whatsoever. Excellent. And for the listener, again, I'll have those links in the action plan, but I definitely recommend checking out proathleteadvantage.com and checking out what Matt has to offer. Matt, thanks for so much for making time to come on the show. Thank you, Jim. And for the listener, until next time, take the time to get clear on your goals and embrace failure as a stepping stone on your path to success. 